think that, that we do make sure. Right, our state of Ohio versus Dan Cobra Basage, 10CR07992. And how do you, would you like to proceed? Um, usually you have the defense go first and we're switching it. No, that would be fine. Yeah, that's fine. Attorney Bradley. I was going to request, since we have to, we have a burden, since there's a presumption in favor of prison in this case, to overcome that presumption that I'd be permitted to request. Well, I think what uh, the format that I'm going to use is I will let people make presentations until they're tired. So don't worry about not getting in the last word. I can probably recall what he said during the course of the year. The law in the state of Ohio tells the court that manslaughter is not a crime that carries mandatory time. The law tells the court that there is a presumption that a person who's convicted of manslaughter should go to prison unless the court looks at more serious factors and less serious factors and looks at recidivism likely factors and recidivism li less likely factors and in weighing those factors finds that the presumption of incarceration has been overcome in this particular case. And uh, I would ask the court to allow me to reserve some time to respond to anything the prosecutor has to say and then I would finish up my presentation to the court. Thank you, Attorney Bradley. Thank you. Wayne was a loving, giving man with a heart as big as the world. A man who died terrified and alone with an evil person. We have lost someone very precious to us who is good and wonderful in our lives. We can imagine no worse form of the offense of voluntary manslaughter and hope that the court sentences the defendant to the maximum permitted by law. To the defendant, you are the epitome of evil. No matter what your sentence, you will forever carry with you the fact that you are a cold-blooded murderer. Two of your former teachers believe that you would end up killing someone someday. It's unfortunate for Dwayne that their prediction came true. To put it one way, the one thing this trial proved was that the defendant in this case sees the truth as a fluid concept. He changes it, molds it, and uses it for whatever benefit he can. That's what he does. And the original story I was confronted with, Your Honor, was the same one that he lied to when he told his parents, he told police officers, he told a juvenile psychologist, people you're all supposed to trust in the process of disclosure, and we probably <coughs> assume told his attorneys, as they repeatedly placed it into the newspapers in interviews. We can only assume that they believe that was the original story and were passing it on for those reasons. That story, Your Honor, was going to be contradicted by the evidence. That story included that he was there to get a ride to school, that he intended to go that day. One lie. That Dwayne came into the room with a knife and pushed him onto the bed. Two lies. He said Dwayne was very calm and Daniel feared, and Daniel feared that Dwayne was going to sexually assault him, particularly since Dwayne said the locks had been changed to prevent Daniel from running out of the house. That never came out of trial. That's lie number three. Daniel threw a pickle jar at Dwayne's head when he saw the knife in Dwayne's hand. That would be lie number four. Dwayne demanded sexual favors from him. That would be five. Daniel began running to the door to escape the house. We know he never did that. That's six. He complained that he can still smell the pickles. He described Dwayne as chasing him through the house with the knife. Once he was trapped in the living room, Daniel punched Dwayne and said that he thought fast, was able to get the knife, fight him off, and kill him. The physical evidence in the scene, which I discussed with Mr. Kinlan, would have shown that to be a lie. Talking about the law, under no circumstances, under no circumstances, does the law permit a 55-year-old man to engage in sexual conduct or sexual contact with someone who is under the age of 16. For the prosecutor to say quid pro quo, which means something for something, 
means that 15-year-olds can be prostitutes. That an adult, as long as that 15-year-old wants something in return, can do whatever they want because it's a quid pro quo. Well, that's baloney. That's why the law says when you become an adult, stay away from young people. And especially if you're in a position of a parent, a coach, or a teacher, or in local parentis, which means acting like a parent, which I think that the law may say Dwayne Hurley did in this particular case. This case is not about me, man. I think most of us here know that are in this courthouse day after day understand that most sex offenses against young people are committed by heterosexual men. Not by gay men. So I certainly find no fault with Wayne Gurley for what occurred to him probably for feel bad that there would never be a way that he could express that sexual preference in any meaningful way with anyone without breaking the law. And I hope that people remember Dwayne for all the good that he did.